Light the fourth candle of Advent. Fill us with your grace and light. We recall the times we have struggled and said yes. We know times when God filled us with hope, joy, peace, and love, and our world with blessings. God, reveal yourself to us. Fill us with your spirit. Bring your good news to life within us. Give us courage to carry your light into the injustices and shadows of this world. Shine on us, O God of justice. Guide our path through gloom of night. Bear within us wisdom's glory. Come to us, O Christ of light.
Also, there's going to be cookies and cook for your meal. Uh, two more announcements. Remember to turn in your pledge forms to Pastor Julia uh, that she gave out last week for your 2023 plan of giving. You're welcome to place them in the basket, mail them in, or place them in Jane's mailbox. Are there any other announcements? Uh, next year's offering envelopes are in your mailboxes out in the hallway. If you don't happen to have a mailbox yet, uh, just look for your box on the shelf in front of the mailboxes and you'll get a mailbox eventually, maybe 10 years from now. But, uh, they're available now, so pick them up uh, and keep them handy for next year's usage. Um, please come down for coffee hour. We have a lovely coffee hour. We're not handing out any of the nativity cookies, though. Other announcements? Just thank you again for uh, everybody for the gifts for um, uh, that Susan and I delivered those to the North uh, Chamber on two. Maybe we did that one Monday. Anyway, last week, <laughs> and uh, they were just so appreciative. So I really thank you all for your great response, and we'll do it again next year. Thank you. Great. Yes. Where the mailboxes are. Anybody else? Art. Uh, I know that tonight we're going to be uh, starting the live activity at 6.30, uh, but anyone who's going to be part of that, I think uh, Shelly had mentioned, uh, try to get here at 6 o'clock, uh, just so we're, we're ready to go and have uh, everything set up. Um, I also know today, uh, after uh, the hospitality, uh, Hour, that we're going to have like a, uh, a fitting for the uh, different uh, outfits okay. and costumes. So if anyone needed to take those, I know like uh, Mac and Maggie both have a piano concert tonight at 5 30, so we're going to be rushing back from that to get to the live activity at 6. So uh, if he can get his shepherd outfit, he can just get dressed in the car. <laughs> okay. Move dress rehearsal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, any other uh, announcements? If you all would like to stand and join us, we're going to sing the first Noel, 179 in your hands. We're going to do verses 1, 2, and 6. Also, while you guys are finding that, thank you all to everybody who came out Friday night. We had such a, good, uh, a fun time with the open mic night, and we had a lot of really cute performances. So if you missed it, please come back in like February or March, whenever I decide to do the next one. We're going to have another one, so please come back.
है receive your gifts, for you are the giver of hope, the giver of peace, the giver of joy, the giver of love. Make your presence known as we make ourselves available to you. Amen. And today's Old Testament is Isaiah 7, 10 to 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Haz. Take a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey, when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. <coughs> The choir's anthem this morning is called Stars Are For Those Who Lift Their Eyes by Pauline Del Monte.
our prayer of transformation. We gather in this season of Advent, anticipating hope, praying for peace, attempting to cultivate joy, and share love amidst, amidst commotion, grief, despair, and uncertainty. May we take a moment of silence to contemplate this. Please join with me. In the world full of hopelessness, we have sometimes forgotten that you are our hope, dear God. Consumed by the chaos of the world, we lean into helplessness instead of your loving embrace. We cling to the stony roads and their bitter rods, felt in days when unborn hope had died. We've forgotten that you promised us hope for the future. So stimulate our memory, dear God. Remind us of that hope that you assured us of. Be with us as we cling to it in the midnight hours of waiting. Beloved, God gives us a merited hope for the future. Peace like a river and joy everlasting with love. No misstep can separate us from the gifts of God. Amen. We now come to a time of prayers, concerns, and joys. And as you notice, I'm not Julia. Julia is sick this morning, and she does ask for your prayers of healing. Um, so she may join us next week for the Christmas celebration. There's others listed in your bulletin that we've been playing, praying for. Bill recovering from surgery, Doug Atkinson and Amy, Jim Philpott still fighting the cancer, Pat Brown with her ALS, Paul Parmelo, Jenny Dice's son-in-law who's undergoing chemo, and a friend's father who has brain cancer. Are there any other joys or concerns that we need to lift up this morning? Offer Missy up too. I know she's been struggling with an illness. Maybe our outreach for the live nativity tonight. Yes, the outreach for the live nativity. And the cookies. It's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and the good news is the ground's probably frozen, so we're not walking in mud. But um, we have snow, and that may bring crowds. That may keep crowds away. We'll see. We also give thanks for. Whoever shoveled our walks and kept them clean when we arrived this morning, they were very nice. I'm not sure who did that, but we give praise that way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you know our needs, you know our strengths, you know our weaknesses. Allow us to be open to you. Allow us to have you come into our hearts and share these virtues of love, joy, peace, and hope. And dear Lord, as people struggle either with illnesses or other parts that they need to deal with, we ask that your healing comfort come to them and that your will be carried out, however that may be, and that we all are here and open to accept it. Dear God, we ask your influence on us in each and every part of our life and what we'll do in plans that we don't even know we have yet, but that you'll guide us and lead us in your grace and mercy. And we give you thanks that we have the opportunity to come together to ask these things of you and know that you hear and will listen as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would like to rise, we will sing together. We're going to sing 187, Away in Nature. Now, do be aware, this is not 185, which is the one that kind of everybody knows. So I'm mixing it up this morning so that on Christmas Eve, we can sing the original, or the one that everybody knows. Um, also, uh, do remember, Christmas Eve, uh, we have two services at 8 and 11 p.m., uh, we will not have Sunday morning service next week, so don't show up because I won't be here, and nor will Pastor Julia. So um, we'll be sleeping. <laughs> Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being the just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not fear. Take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Joseph woke from sleep. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had born a son, and he called his name Jesus, the word of the Lord. And now for any children that would care to come up for a children's message. Great. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Oh boy. All right. One, two, three. All the way. I guess. 
guess that means, what does that mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's coming. And uh, that reading uh, I just read from the gospel had three things I want to just talk briefly about. One is dreams, another one is angels, and lastly, Joseph. So, first, uh, can you imagine uh, not knowing that the first Christmas is coming and you might be a little bit anxious about it. I think Mary and Joseph sure were. Um, anyhow, dreams. Uh, do you guys remember any of your dreams? Not much. Not, no, I don't think we do, but what are some of the things that happen in dreams? Are, do, are they ever scary? Yeah. Sometimes, huh? Sometimes they're scary. Have you ever been excited? about something you dreamt about? Like, you can fly or, uh, you know, it's something cool happening. Um, but aren't they, they're hard to understand, huh? Yeah, I, I, I think we're still, even the smartest people here can't figure out what dreams are all about sometimes. So it, it, causes, it causes us to, um, to wonder, of course, and, uh, so, certainly dreams can evoke all of those emotions. Now, angels, that's the second thing I wanted to speak about. Angels, They're, they play a big role at Christmas time. In fact, who's going to be the angel tonight? Eve. 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 Eve's going to be the angel. Yeah. Terrific. So, we have, we have an angel that's going to kick off the live nativity. We had, uh, and, and that angel told the shepherds about it. And uh, we had an angel appear before Mary. And then I spoke in the gospel today about an angel that uh, came to Joseph. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So back to, the, back to the whole idea of being ready for Christmas. Oh, man, I know some of us are a little bit anxious and a little bit nervous about Christmas. Uh, it's one week away, John said. Yep, that every year it's 25th. And it sneaks up on all of us a little bit. Some of us are nervous. I bet you're a little bit excited, too. <laughs> it's kind of that, that sort of thing. It, it's, uh, imagine now you're Joseph, and you're unsure, and... You're unsure about what's happening. Mary has a child growing in her, and he didn't plan on it, and they didn't plan on it, and they were about to give birth to, they didn't know how and why, and, and they, were, they were confused. They were anxious. They were nervous about it, but then an angel came to Joseph. And it made things better. I brought a, I brought a, uh, an angel dream machine with me here today. So who wants to be Joseph? Oh, all right, all right. So put this in your ear and hold it real tight. You know how these work, right? These dream machines. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to pretend I'm the angel here, all right? So you, Joseph. <laughs> Listen, I know you're kind of worried about things this coming birth of a child, but look, here's the good news. One, we already got a name for him. The name's going to be Jesus, so you don't have to worry about that. We've got that covered. Second thing, it's cool. Don't worry about a thing this was all meant to be. Mary is with a child, and the child is called Jesus, and Jesus is going to be the greatest gift that people have ever experienced. And you are going to be his earthly father. So, don't worry. Be excited. And lastly, Joseph 
I want you to know something. You got this, man. <laughs> okay? And so Joseph wakes up and he is he's suddenly okay with things. And he and Mary are filled with a newfound confidence. All right, this is going to be coming. We don't know what's going to come of it, but we've been told that we're about to give the world the greatest gift it ever received. So imagine not knowing what you were about to face and then being told and having confidence that everything is going to be okay. And it's going to be a joyous celebration. So as we celebrate Christmas and in the week building up to it, as it's going to play out in a lot of nativity, think about how excited, I know you are, but think about Joseph and Mary and what they were about to give the gift to all people, the gift of our Savior Christ child. Amen. Thanks for coming up and being part of the Jewish. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. And I'm excited. And because this is it. I mean, it's gonna happen. All five candles, as Chuck pointed out to the kids, are lit on the advent wreath. We have stars, we have ribbons. The music is upbeat and positive today. Christmas is coming, and we all know it. You know, the hymns are upbeat, the scriptures are even coming to a conclusion. Mary and Joseph are together, and they're going to be on their way to Bethlehem soon. The presents from the mission committee, or mission committee are all packaged and delivered. And maybe there's a few preparations we need to do, but guess what? Christmas is going to happen, and it's going to be here. Um, this week, there's going to be celebrations in school. There's going to be celebrations at work. There's going to be social gatherings with family and friends. You're going to share dinners and pleasantries. The kids, you guys get a week vacation coming up. <laughs> yeah! All right, I knew you'd be happy with that. You know, we're going to celebrate Christmas, and that's exciting, and that's wonderful, and, and I could end that right here and say, hey, Merry Christmas to you all, and let's go out and celebrate the birth of Christ and all the warmth and pleasantries that the Christmas season brings. But, and, and you, you notice in scriptures there's always a but that, that comes out, and, and I know here, you know, the but might be that you don't want just a three-minute, five-minute sermon. You want to hear something a little more. You want to get what you paid for. You want the full 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't go that long. <laughs> Just 42. <laughs> but God has actually been preparing his people for hundreds and thousands of years with the message. In Isaiah today, Isaiah, Isaiah was written in the 8th century, but it actually happened. Isaiah was the prophet 740 years before Jesus was born. 740 years. That's longer, twice as long as this country, God bless America, has existed. And look at all of our history and problems and concerns. So going back a thousand years, God has been preparing his people. And he said in the scriptures, that there would be a child born of a girl, and his name would be Emmanuel. Emmanuel, loosely translated, means God among the people, God with us. Now, wouldn't that be an interesting thing this morning if God was sitting in that last row, or maybe even in the first row? You know, no pressure, huh? <laughs> um, but God is with us. And he is among us. But as we see in the scriptures that there is always concerns and troubles and doubts that maybe we share even with ourselves. That 
burdens and temptations that we had to overcome. You remember the story of Joseph and his brothers where they sold him into slavery because they were jealous of his father being loving toward, towards him. And, and they thought it was taking away from them. And he went into slavery and we know he became a ruler in Egypt and, and helped them out later. You know That is something that, man, that could have came back and bit them in the butt. But God was with Joseph through his trials, through his um, rough times. And he taught him how to be gracious. Gracious with others and gracious with his brothers. How easily it would have been for him to say, hey, you know, you got rid of me once. I can take care of you. He had that power. But no, he was gracious. And then there was the three individuals, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You may not remember their names, but I'm sure you remember their story. We were introduced to them in the book of Daniel. They were three Jewish men that have a very fervent love for the scriptures. And they would refuse to worship a false god. And King Nebuchadnezzar persuaded them and worked on them. And they would not give up their faith in God. And so he threw them into the furnace to burn. And God was with them. And they were, came out unprotected, unscorched from the flames because God was with them. And then you're familiar with the story of Naomi and Ruth. Daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, Naomi went with her husband. She left Israel. She gave up everything that she had. She lost everything that was near and dear to her. And Ruth married one of the sons, and she was with Naomi. And lo and behold, not only did she lose other things, her husband died, Naomi's husband. And then Ruth's husband, Naomi's sons, both of them died. They went back to Israel. By law, there was no legal bound that Naomi had to be, or Ruth had to be with Naomi. There's not, even in the customs, she was free to go. Naomi, who was discouraged, who was downtrodden, who was even bitter because of everything she gave up, told Ruth that she could go on her way. But Ruth was obedient, and she stayed with her mother-in-law, and she rebuilt her hope. And we know in the stories that those two women did very good things and brought goodness to everything. And it was because God was with them. And then we come to today's story. But before that, there's all other stories in the Bible. Moses dealt with the Egyptians and he dealt with the Israelites. And there was Job who suffered many different trials. And his wife even encouraged him. Give up your God. But he didn't. And he was blessed in the end. And Jeremiah and even Paul. And then in today's scriptures, there's Joseph. Joseph engaged to be married with Mary. And Mary turns up pregnant. And even in, and Joseph knew it wasn't him. And even in today's society, with relaxed morals and everything. That is still a scandal, scandalous item. You're taking a person who has a child that's not yours. And, and it was a tough thing for Joseph. And, and as Chuck said, an angel came to him and told him, it's going to be all right. That's God that's with Mary. And that's God that's with you. And the two of you, God will be with you. And things are going to be okay. Think how different that story would have been if Joseph said, I can't deal with this, I'm not going to do it, and gave Mary up. You know, There would be no reason for Mary to go to Bethlehem. The shepherds would have never heard about it in the fields outside of Bethlehem. I don't know how that story would have played out, where it would have went. But God is with us. God is with you. He's with me. He's with everybody here. He's with people that aren't here. And maybe we're not going to get a 12-foot tall being with wings the size of a jetliner coming to us in a dream or even walking down the street. But there are angels that come to us. 
And maybe we don't see them. Maybe we're influenced by God through coming to church, through reading the Bible, through other people, through events, through different things that happen. God is with us. And we are influenced by God. He protects us. He sanctifies us. He leads us. He guides us. I don't know if it was a coincidence or how it happened, but yesterday morning when Julia contacted me and said she was sick and she wasn't going to be able to be here, and I agreed that I'd do the sermon, I thought, well, maybe I should write down a couple thoughts, organize it, so I have something to present today. And went down to the desk and I grabbed the tablet and I start jotting some things down and looking at the scripture and references. And as I flipped to a couple pages, I came to a bunch of formulas and, and numbers that I had worked on. Um, I'm a certified pool operator. That's part of my job at the school district I work with. That um, swimming pools are regulated by the Department of Agriculture and then the Department of Health here in Allegheny County. Um, I know Mac is a big swimmer. He's looking forward to do that when he goes to Holiday Valley um, later in July. But swimming pools are regulated. And as a uh, CPO, you have to take a course every five years, and there's a test. And you get all kinds of formulas, the flow rate, the media that you put in your filter, um, free chlorine versus combined chlorine and everything. Because a swimming pool, if you want to think about it, and I don't want to gross anybody out, <laughs> is a big bowl of soup. And we keep adding ingredients by people into that soup. And when you put people in, you get different things that are going into that water. You, you get, get your natural body oils and, and sweat that goes in there. You might get deodorant that people have on or hair gel. And all these different things go into that water. Um, yes, it's gross. But if you manage that water and you run it through a filtration system and you have so many gallons per minute running through and you have your disinfectant, uh, most commonly it's chlorine, but they use bromine. There's also ionization. And... That water is kept safe and clean for the swimmers. And I can tell you, most swimming pools, and not to gross you out, are safer than the water fountains in the hallways. There's less bacteria in the pools because it's being disinfected. But the coincidence I thought about was, that's what God's doing with us. We make mistakes. We stumble. We fall. And he's taking us and he's filtering out the bad. And he's disinfecting us and cleaning us so we may be sanctified to serve him and to serve others. At times, we may be the angels to somebody. You don't know. But I do believe there's angels among us. And the message here this morning, the Christmas message, is God is with us wherever we go and wherever we do. So Merry Christmas and celebrate that in this coming week. Amen. Yes. We'll do the benediction, and then we'll have a song. Go forth with the gift of hope, guiding you toward the path of peace. Go forth with the gift of joy, guide you toward the path of love. Go forth with anticipation, trusting that God will bless you and keep you. God's face will shine upon you, and God's grace will never leave you. God is with you. Amen. If you would like to rise, we'll sing our closing hymn together. Uh, it is 193, O Come All You Faithful. Now, we're only going to sing the first two verses, so don't sing the third one because you don't get to sing that until uh, Christmas Eve. So you got to come back.
Thank you. You can join us downstairs for fellowship.